In this video, I'm going to tell you my story of rejection. Earlier this year, in March of 2023, my full-time return offer to work at Shopify was rescinded. In 2022, last year, I did two internships at Shopify. My manager really liked me, my team loved me, and at the end of my second internship, they gave me a return offer to come back and work there full-time. And after I received that return offer, I was overjoyed. I didn't really feel the need to go out there and apply for other companies because I had this full-time offer in my hand. When everybody was getting fired, everybody was getting their offers rescinded, I was safe until I wasn't. And in March of 2023, after not responding to my messages for two or three months, Shopify formally sent me an email saying that they wanted to schedule a call. And in that call, they were sending my offer. After ghosting me, they were sending 10 to 20 intern offers, including mine. And I'm gonna be honest, it was not easy. I had held out hope that it wasn't gonna happen to me. And when it did, I was thrown all the way back to square one. I really didn't know what to do. It was in March, so it was late in the cycle. Most companies just weren't hiring and I was kind of lost. I started to get hopeless. My options were not clear, but I needed to get a job. So I looked for one anyway. I sent out a bunch of job applications and didn't really hear anything back until I reached out to my manager for my sophomore year internship at John Deere. John Deere is this agriculture company that's huge in my hometown. It's the company that every kid from my high school works at. The basic life path is that you graduate from Pleasant Valley High School in Iowa, study computer science or software engineering, and then your first job is at John Deere. And the thing about John Deere is that I would be moving back home with my parents. I would be hanging out with all of my high school friends. I'd be sleeping in my childhood bedroom. I'd be returning to my roots, going back to where I lived my entire life before I left home. So this recruiter at John Deere graciously offered me the chance to interview for a position there. Not even a software engineering role, some kind of rotational industrial mechanical engineering position. And at the time I was so desperate, I just took it. I needed a position and I didn't even care if it was software engineering or if my degree even helped with it. So I prepared like hell for this interview. I even mock interviewed with a family friend who used to be a high up at John Deere. And afterwards he looked at me and he said, dude, you're a shoe in. They're for sure going to hire you. They're going to love you. You're extremely qualified. Why wouldn't they hire you? So I did the interview, made it through the final round, and I thought I did pretty well. Also, one of my best friends interviewed for exactly the same position. His interview was literally right after mine. And we both completed the full interview cycle. And about a week later, my friend texted me, yo, I just got the offer. I'm probably going to accept it and work there full time. And when I saw that, my heart sunk. Not because I was mad at him for getting the job offer, but because I didn't get the offer yet. So I kept checking my email over and over again, but nothing. And at this point, my mind was going crazy. It was all happening all over again. And two days later, I opened my email and I see an update from the recruiter. And it's, sorry, we can't offer you the position. Thank you for your time. Within one month, two major rejections. First from Shopify. I literally interned there two times, got a full-time return offer, and whoop, what do you know? They were sent that offer. And then from John Deere, a company that I also interned at, a company that people were telling me I had a 100% chance of getting that offer. Nope, rejected. Again, John Deere was supposed to be that base employer. Kids from my high school, kids from my middle school were getting jobs there. So I applied and I didn't get it. And at this point, I was like, who the fuck am I now? What the fuck am I supposed to do? What was the point of it all? I did four years of a computer science major at a good school. I did five software engineering internships. I did over a hundred lead code problems and I can't even get a job at John Deere. What the fuck is wrong with me? As soon as I got the rejection, I was just hit with this wave of despair. I picked up the phone, called my dad and told him what happened. And okay, as an Indian male, you don't really cry in front of your father, but I'm gonna be honest, I couldn't really hold it back. And I think you could hear it in my voice. And the first thing he says to me is, what are you afraid of? He then said, I will put you up. I will pay for your lifting coach. I will pay for your singing coach. I will pay for whatever resources you need over the next six months to get back on your feet. I will put food on the table. And after you graduate, you can move back in with me. I will give you six months to grind and find a job. What are you afraid of? I was kind of taken aback. I didn't know what to say. But as soon as he said that, I was like, what am I afraid of? The whole time I thought I was afraid of not having a job. I was scared of being a failure, but it went one level deeper than that. What did not having a job mean? Well, it meant that I was going to move back home with my parents. And not even that, I was going to be in my childhood bedroom. I was going to be sleeping in the same bed as I did when I was 10 years old. I was terrified that I was going to regress back to my degenerate high school self the person I was before I undertook my journey of self-improvement. In my mind, not having a job meant that I was basically a high schooler again. 
that if I took one step into my high school bedroom, the last four years were all for nothing. And I was a failure piece of shit who wasted his degree and couldn't find a job. And as soon as my dad said that, not only would he house me, but he would pay for my coaching, my learning, any of my development, I instantly felt much, much better. Because I knew that I wouldn't regress. I knew that my progress, my self-development over the last four years would be preserved. And almost immediately, my mindset shifted. I found myself emanating this warm optimism. In fact, I started to be excited to not have a job. My singing and lifting coaches were covered, so now I actually had the time to focus on other things that I cared about. Now that I don't have a job, what else can I do? Well, I can focus on YouTube full time. I've never had the time to focus on it. It's always been a side thing because of classes and internships. But now that I'm unemployed, I can focus on it full time. YouTube can move from that side thing to the main thing. I'm so hyped to grind and grow and invest in this thing all because I don't have a job. And you know what? I can travel now. I never really did extended travel before and took a gap year. Sure, I went on family vacations, but I never had the time to travel the world and visit all of my friends and family. And now I can, all because I was blessed by God to not have a job. I adopted the Jocko Willink mindset. Jocko Willink is this ultra-disciplined Navy SEAL who has this philosophy where whenever something bad happens, he just says, good. Something bad happens, good. Your offer gets rescinded, good. You get fired, good. I don't have a job, good. Now that I'm unemployed, I can work on YouTube full time and I can travel the world and I can really develop my mind. I can do everything I wanted to do that school and work was getting in the way of. And that mindset launched me out of this low level depression. During that stage of my life, after all of those rejections, I would just find myself sitting in the car and crying. I'd be on the way to prepare for yet another interview and in my mind, I knew that I'd get rejected and I would just sit there and cry. But now I had this grin on my face and I started to approach everything with this healthy level of optimism. As soon as my mindset shifted, everything good happened to me. So how did I end up actually finding a job? I mean, I'm working as a software engineer right now. I'm not actually unemployed. So how did I do it? And the key was that I took that new sense of optimism. I funneled it into my job search and it worked. And the secret, the number one technique was to stop hiding my rejection, to start sharing my failures with the world and using my network. I talk about using your network in every video. It's one of my core life principles that you need to use your network. What I did was as soon as I got off the phone with my dad, as soon as I was imbued with this new sense of optimism, I immediately opened my phone and texted 15 to 20 of my friends, hey guys, I just got rejected from John Deere and Shopify rescinded my offer. I'm looking for a job and I need your help. Please send any opportunities you have my way. I'm really struggling. I also made public what happened with Shopify in a LinkedIn post. And when I shared my rejection with the world, the world answered. People came in and helped me out. I got so many different opportunities and resources from people who heard about what happened and wanted to help me. And the one opportunity that finally worked out was from my friend Adam. He was in the computer science building, he knew that I was looking for a job, and he stumbled upon this flyer from a company who was advertising an open role. So he pulled out his phone, he took a picture, and he sent it to me. And I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna apply. And then I got the first interview. And then I passed the first interview. And then I got the second interview, and the third interview, and then I got the final interview, and then I passed, and then I got the offer. And now I'm working there today. And you know what? Their offer is far, far better than John Deere. So sometimes things work out in the end. Thank fucking God I didn't get John Deere because I would have moved back home. I would have been doing some weird industrial mechanical engineering shit. And now I have a software engineering job that's higher paying. I'm learning a lot. It's a great work-life balance. I love the people here. Thank God I got rejected. Thank God I had to deal with the pain of not being able to find a software job. So in the end, the lesson here is one, when something bad happens, just say good and focus on the benefits. I was genuinely excited to work on YouTube and travel and it brought this healthy optimism about me. And number two, share your rejection with the world. If you just share your vulnerability, if you stop being so afraid to open up to people, people will step in and help you out. If you tell everyone in your network that you were rejected, chances are that someone will help you. That's a work for me. If you're interested in my ultimate checklist to land your first software engineering job or internship, you can sign up for my email newsletter. The link is in the description. It's completely for free and you can unsubscribe at any time. If you're new here, my name is Aman. I'm a software engineer and on this channel, we explore self-improvement topics focused through the lens of tech and coding. So if you're interested in that, please consider subscribing. Also check out my Instagram. It's at Aman Manazer. I'm posting more often there about singing and lifting and other aspects of my life outside of tech. So if you're interested in that, please give me a follow there. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.